Hi, I'm Chris Atkinson from the Subaru World Rally team. Today I'm going to show you through my office the Subaru Impreza World Rally Car 2006. Hope you enjoy the show. Okay, here we go, hopping into the car. Uh, it's not as easy as a road car to get into. Obviously, we've got the roll cage and then uh, deep bucket seats. Um, a lot of differences, obviously, between the road car and this car. Uh, two of the biggest ones you can see here, both the, the handbrake lever and the gear shift, totally different to a, a normal car. Uh, normally, you'd have a, a gear shift here, but uh, we've actually got a handbrake lever, which helps us do handbrake turns um, in tricky situations, or if we're going too fast to a corner, we can quickly pull it and, uh, and it'll get us out of a, an understeer or something like that. Also, we've got the, the gear shift here, um, which is a lot easier than a normal road car. Uh, we just pull up, you can do it with one finger if you want, and uh, that will shift up gears and push away to go down gears. You don't have to use a clutch or, or anything like that. You can stay full throttle and just keep pulling up gears, uh, which is quite good fun. It's, it's easy to drive. Uh, as you can see here, this is uh, the steering wheel of the, the Impreza World Rally car. Uh, it's actually made of carbon fibre, so it's lightweight, which is good for the, the centre of gravity and that because it's quite up high. Also, there's a, a lot of buttons here. Um, quite simple to use, really. We've just got a uh, washer um, and wipe and a marker button, which helps the engineers. If we have a problem with the car, we can press that red button and that will put a mark in the data. And the other two are just for our, our headlights and our launch control which we use at the start line. Um, generally during the stage you don't use them much, just the washer, but Glenn's also got them on his side so he can use them um, if, if we have some mud come on the windscreen or something like that. Obviously uh, a lot of controls here that are different to a, a road car as well. We've got a lot of circuit breakers um, which we've got to put all these in. Um, we've got a system when we start the car and then when, once we're going on the stage as well. So we put all of them in and um, and hopefully they all stay in and we have no problems. When we're, we're talking about the start of a stage, um, firstly we've got a, a gear selection device here which is obviously different to a car again. Um, we've got a road mode and a stage mode and reverse and obviously neutral. So uh, obviously put the clutch in and then select either road or stage depending on what we're going to do and then uh, drive off and use the gears. Another switch which is very important at the start of the stage is the uh, anti-lag switch and this gives us instant response. So you don't want to run with this when you're driving along slowly because it builds up an enormous amount of heat in the turbo, uh, but we turn it on at the start of the stage, usually onto three the maximum, and, uh, and go flat out. It gives great response and you can let the car go really slow and then hit the throttle and you've got full boost which is, is amazing to drive. this angle you can see we're sitting a long way back as well, we're back here with the B pillar which is nearly halfway in the back seat and that means the steering wheel and the pedals are all brought this way and uh, this helps with the centre of gravity, uh, we're sitting low and far back so the car's nice and balanced and uh, this all helps with performance. Just some other small features, obviously the, the safety thing is a big thing, you've got a, a massive roll cage, uh, huge amounts of tube all, all throughout the car and then the seats with these special head devices and uh, five point harnesses as well to hold us in tight so we don't move. As you can see when we're going for big jumps and things like that it's quite tricky and, uh, and you can get thrown around but this holds us in place well and that means we can keep focused on the road. Okay, as you can see from this angle, uh, we're sitting quite low in the car again, uh, down low with the steering wheel as well. Uh, another point on the steering wheel is the surface. It's made of a, a special felt material which matches the gloves, so if we hit a rock or want to throw the car into the corner, we've got good grip. Another special feature of these cars is the, the felt on the dash here, which helps uh, with the sunlight coming in. There's no glare on a normal dash, you'd get glare into your eyes, but, but with this felt, it nullifies the glare and then you can see the road and have no problems driving. Six right, pop open, 40. Eight, six right on crest, knee them up very long, five left open, caution brake crest, seven right. As you can see from this angle again, the, the pedals are a long way back, but uh, generally the setup's the same as a normal road car. You've got your throttle, brake and then clutch. Uh, generally the only two we care about are obviously the throttle and the brake. Uh, the brake's a lot bigger than a normal brake pedal and it's also a lot harder to, to push. This gives you better feedback and better feel. Um, generally you use our left foot to brake and our right foot to, to use the throttle and, and don't worry about the clutch. 
clutch is just for road sections and uh, just for stopping at traffic lights, otherwise we don't use it. So uh, that's, that's how they work. But uh, I hope you enjoy the, the time in my Subaru and Preza World Rally car. So proof then, if needed, of just how technologically advanced these machines are. From the outside, they may look similar to a road car, but under the skin, they're anything but. After the break, the force is with France in the WRC era. Don't go away. Welcome back to WRC's Greatest Cars. 1997 saw a motorsport revolution. The FIA created World Rally Cars, a fundamental break from rallying's past, introducing technical rules which were much closer to a racing-type formula. WRC cars have to be based on their road-going counterparts, with at least 25,000 having to be produced, but that's as far as it goes. The road cars don't have to be four-wheel drive or turbocharged. Designers can cut holes in floor plans, add aerofoils, flared wheel arches and so on. This means World Rally cars are easier to produce, and as a result, this has heralded an era of unprecedented technological innovation. The format reached a peak in 2001 with manufacturer entries from Peugeot, Ford, Subaru, Mitsubishi, Skoda and Hyundai, while Citroen debuted the new Zara. The last decade has witnessed some terrific title fights and the World Rally car has certainly proved a popular formula. It's a different era now, obviously there's more technology and uh, things have moved on. I mean, not just in electronics, but I mean, uh, sort of weight distribution and four-wheel drive. So. Uh, I think it's, it doesn't matter what car you drive, I mean, if you're a competitive driver, um, it doesn't matter whether it's two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, you will always have tremendous fun if you're a driver. I mean, it doesn't matter what you drive, it's, it's the thrill of actually driving them and being competitive. Mm. The World Rally cars are, from today, are very nice cars. It doesn't matter if it's the Peugeot, Citroën, or whatever I drive before. I'm quite happy to be in a World Rally car. Not many people can say this, and. Uh, I, I wish to stay every minute in that car, and I think the cars today are the nicest ones. It's the state of the art rally car and, and the, the last uh, development of uh, what engineers can do in WRC, so that, that's make it fun. The w, WRC is a very good compromise uh, between the, because the, the car is safety and then uh, very spectacular for the, for the spectator and I think it's a very good compromise for the moment. The cars they've been developing so much now during the years and uh, we are going faster and faster all the time even though rules change but engineers are, they are quite wise so uh, we always find some speed. Sometimes you just go through the corners you don't even kind of realize it. It's really amazing how fast you can go. When it comes to picking classic machines from the World Rally Car era, there have certainly been plenty of obvious candidates. After the success of the Celica, the innovative Toyota Corolla saw the Japanese manufacturer claim four wins in 98 and 99. While Subaru's Impreza continued its fine run into the WRC period, powering Richard Burns and Peter Solberg to championship glory and claiming a manufacturer's title in the category's first year in 1997. Meanwhile, the Ford Focus has gone from strength to strength since it debuted in 1999. Still going strong after eight years, it has 28 wins to its name, and in 2006, the team achieved their first manufacturer's title since their 1979 success with the Escort. For much of the last 10 years, though, it's been the French teams who've dominated. Peugeot returned to the WRC in 99 with the stylish-looking 206. While the car proved a little too fragile to win in its first season, it was immediately on the pace and the team didn't have to wait too long for the car's maiden victory. Marcus Gronholm achieved his and the car's first win in Sweden 2000. Gronholm claimed the driver's title in 2000 and 2002, while Peugeot won back-to-back -back manufacturer's championships in 2000, 2001 and 2002. came on the right time. We had a good team. The car was very good, new, new things on it and uh, the size of the car was perfect. At that time it was the best car. When it came to the rallies 99, uh, I think it was a little bit ahead of time compared to the other cars. It was very small and, 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 and handy. We just happened to get a good chance in proper timing 
to drive that car and, and everything seemed to be very very good and and it was very easy car to drive not to be outdone by its PSA stablemate, Citroen 2 soon rejoined the sport. The journey started with surprise victories in Catalonia and Corsica with the F2 kit car. Once the Zara World Rally car made its debut in 2001, it was clear it would be a winner. The Zara had an incredible record of reliability and with the all-conquering Sebastian Lowe behind the wheel, Citroen took over domination of the Manufacturers' Championship from Peugeot with the Zara claiming 32 wins and their own treble success from 03 to 05, while Loeb himself became a three-time Drivers' Champion. After a sabbatical in 2006, Citroen have returned again, this time replacing the dominant Zara with the all-new C4. And with Loeb immediately back to winning ways, this stylish-looking machine is already looking like a classic in the making. It's a fantastic car uh, in uh, every condition, uh, the engine, uh, suspension, uh, handling and everything is, is very fun. From those wooden panelled early adventures with motorised transport to these monsters of motorsport, Rally's powerful beasts. Not just Rally's greatest, let's be honest, they're quite simply some of the world's greatest cars.